After you finish the person pair programming activity, you can start on the triangle GUI solo programming activity. Of course you can help each other. Of course I will help you. Um, but I want you to work through this on your own. And I want to give you some tips as well, because this is pretty ch challenging. Um, the first tip is read section 10.10 .10 in your textbook. That entire section is all about mouse events. So this practice programming activity is going to be focused on listening for mouse events rather than listening for action events because we're clicking on buttons. That said, the structure is still the same. Um, it's, it's just a different type of event we're looking for. There is some code already in our project to help you with this. There's already a triangle frame class and a triangle component class. As we develop more sophisticated GUIs, it's gonna be a little bit more than our button viewer example, which everything was just in one class. In addition, instead of just creating like J frame objects or J panel objects, um, we're going to be subclassing those classes to add extra behavior. So we're not just gonna create a J frame, the triangle frame class is a J frame. So inside of its constructor, we're not gonna make a new J frame because it is a J frame. We already have one. Instead, we're gonna be focused on creating the components we need, adding them to this because again, triangle frame is a J frame. So we can just say this dot add to add the component to the frame and this dot set size, set title, set visible, all that stuff. And then in our main method, we just create a new triangle frame, which is a J frame to get the whole program started. You do not need to change any code in triangle frame. All of your code is gonna be filled in here in triangle component. Um, you'll need to write some, the constructor, some methods, you'll need to add code to paint component just like we did with the Cityscape lab. You'll need to add some um, inner classes for your listener um, as we go as well. Um, so you already have the classes created, you'll just have to add some stuff to it. Here is what this is supposed to look like when it works. I think it's really helpful in this case for you to actually see it so you know what to expect. When your program is working and you run it, you're gonna get a window that looks like this with a title of triangle. And this is the triangle component, just this gray blank area, okay? And we're listening for mouse click events in this area. And section 1010 shows us all how to do that. When I click, it draws, it's a little hard to see, it draws a little circle where I clicked. When I click a second time, it draws a line from the first point where I clicked to the second point where I clicked. Okay, that means you need to remember where the clicks occur. If I click a third time, it completes the triangle. Okay? So think of this as like a little app that lets us draw triangles. If I click a fourth time, it erases the triangle, goes away. So first click is a point. Mouse not working. My cursor highlight sometimes confuses it. The second click is a line. The third click is the triangle. The fourth click goes away. You're going to have to add some instance variables to that triangle component class to keep track of all this stuff, right? Because you're going to need to keep track of up to three points. You're going to use the state machine design pattern that we've talked about before. The idea that we the object has a state and that state would be, are we drawing a point? Are we drawing a line? Are we drawing a triangle? That is, has one point been clicked? Have two points been clicked? Have three points been clicked? Or are we back to like a blank screen? So you'll need an instance variable to keep track of the state of your triangle component. And you'll need to keep track of each of those three points as well. I cannot recommend strongly enough to do this really in an incremental fashion. And these are the five steps I recommend. Step one is just run it. When you run the code that's provided, you should just get a window that just pops up. That's still useful, we have a window. Okay, that's step one. Step two is to figure out the mouse listener interface enough 
and create a, uh, a class that implements mouse listener. But in the method, just print to the terminal, just do system out print line. And when you run it and you click inside of that component, you should just see messages being print like mouse clicked, mouse clicked, mouse clicked. That's a really good step in the right direction. Then you can update that message that's being printed, not to just say mouse clicked, but actually specify the X and Y coordinate where the mouse is clicked, right? Once you have that working, then worry about drawing anything. We're not, we haven't even drawn anything yet. Then you can worry about how do I remember where the mouse is clicked? How do I use that point within the context of paint component to actually draw a little circle, get that step working, then go in with the whole state machine where you're keeping track of how many times has the mouse been clicked, what are all three points, based on how many clicks, what do I need to draw, all that type of stuff. I think that's going to get you all going when you're ready for this. Um, there is here a UML sequence diagram, which I'll talk about later. I think this will make more sense once you have a little bit more context of having started working on your triangle GUI. Um, a UML sequence diagram is another type of UML diagram. We've been focused on UML design class diagrams, which show the relationship between classes. A sequence diagram shows the messages, the methods that are invoked at runtime between objects. And the reason why this is important for this activity is the flow of execution for a graphical user interface program in Java is significantly different than anything we've seen before. And it's not always clear who's calling what and why and when methods get called. So once we have a little bit more context, we'll come back to this diagram. Of course, you're welcome to look at it now. Um, and we'll talk through it together to better understand what exactly is happening in this program. So we'll do that. We'll do that early next week.